Often it's nice in a picture book to have some kind of chorus that keeps coming back again. But then for the last line, it's quite nice to vary that a little bit. Like in my book, Stickman, he keeps throughout the book saying, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me, and I want to go home to the family tree. But I changed that in the last line when he is home. I said, and I'm sticking right here in the family tree. So I was quite pleased then I got a little pun on the word stick in there. Um, I think sometimes it's nice as well in an ending to have like a new beginning. And um, when I wrote The Snail and the Whale, which I've got here, in a way the ending is the snail coming home and um, coming back to the rock where he started off from. But at the very end, and this bit I probably didn't plan, I maybe didn't plan this, um, all the snails are setting off on a new adventure and this book ends and they sang to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of the grey blue humpback whale. So I think that's quite nice when an ending can include a, a new beginning as well. What kind of endings do you like in books that you read for your own entertainment and pleasure? I like a good satisfying ending. I do like the threads to be tied up, you know, and I don't want it all to be unrealistic and too sort of sealed, but I do like to find out, have the answers to my questions. Um, and I don't like it at all when you find out that the whole thing was just a dream. Um, I've got Alice in Wonderland here, and at the end of that, you know, you find that when she was down the rabbit hole and all those wonderful adventures she had, they were just kind of like a dream because she's dozed off, and I really, really hate that. I'm never, I love Alice in Wonderland, but I really don't like that ending, and I'm never going to write a book myself where it all turns out to be a dream. I do plan my books a lot, and I think my picture book training really trained me to do that. So when I wrote... Um, running on the cracks, I didn't just start, you know, writing and see what happened. Not at all. I very much had a structure for the book. Um, so I think, I, I, I suppose I ran out of steam a few, on a, a, when I had a few goes at trying to write this book, and a couple of times I did run out of steam or, you know, lost interest. Or, but when I finally got going, no, I carried on straight to the end, and I certainly didn't run out of steam at the end. It was hard to at the end, but, you know, I was so keen. It's a bit like when you finish knitting something. I'm not a good knitter, but I used to knit these little berries, and by the time I was starting to get fed up with it, I thought, no, no, I can keep going, I'm nearly at the end. So I think, in a way, when you get to the end, you get a bit of adrenaline, and you, you do keep going. Actually, a book doesn't have to end. Um, in this book, Charlie Cook's favourite book, it kind of goes right round in a circle because um, the little boy in the book, Charlie Cook, it starts off, Once upon a time, there was a boy called Charlie Cook who curled up in a cosy chair and read his favourite book. And then you find out what his book is about, and it's about a pirate who's reading a book about the three bears who are reading a book about something else and so on and so on. And at the end, it says that the ghost, um, she puts her head back on again to read her favourite book about a cosy armchair and a boy called Charlie Cook. So it's come right round in a circle and that book could just go on forever and ever.